Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Aldridge Farm and farming. What? I'm, I've kind of confused myself and screwed up my own intro. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be harvesting field B and um, I've kind of decided the single bit well, that how I want to do this is I want to do this manually which is going to be fun. I'm just going to this forward, there we go. Let's hop into the harvester now. And uh, as you can see, I have to switch the controls that appear on the screen for me to the Xbox controls so that I don't get confused. And um, what did I do? off screen, I um, started an edit and save game on Whisper Chills just to test uh, what trailers can hold in your and what can't. And it turns out whether it's multi fruit mod or just the game, uh, the way that it's designed, um, it turns out that pretty much all the trailers I have can all be pure. Uh, which is good, because it does mean that I don't have to throw everything into it. Um, but I will anyway, but I, I, I don't necessarily have to throw everything into a placeable heap at the lambs. Um, it means that I can pretty much make placeable heaps one by every field, if I so wish, for manure. And um, with more lambs I will probably need to do that because they'll be getting loads and loads and loads of manure and that's always a good thing. Um, this is a, you can see we've got 60,000 euro and I do have plans how to use that, um, at least part of it anyway. And what we're going to be getting is we are going to be swapping the cedar. And the cedar we have now is 3 meters and does cultivate. However, um, it does not take the seed master seeds. Uh, as you know, I've got a second mod that can create seeds as well, if I still wish to use it. Uh, which I might, just to get the kind of bonus seeds going. Um, and it can create fertilizer too, which is awesome. Um, the going back to the cedar, it can um, cultivate and is essentially no till uh, one pass. It cannot take the seed master seeds, uh, which are their own fill type. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Brantner trailer that can hold those seeds, and that'll be our, our refill trailer awesome so we can bring it around to the fields with us and um, save a bit of time that way and what we can also do is we can get a seeder that can hold those seeds as well and then we're seeding essentially for free um, as far as I know we can do that at the, at, at the moment uh, I think we've got the ability I think we've got enough um, seeds saved up have that as a viable option. Now obviously we're not going to be seeding straight away. I want to get all the harvesting done before I start cultivating, which is why uh, fields 11 and A, I believe, we went to the fields. That's why they're just picked clean of straw. And why we have 60,000 euros in the first place. They've been picked clean of straw and um, the straw has been sold off, I've found no need to bring it down to the sheep, the land. Um, I think I might bring some down to the mixing station, uh, that's down by, that's down at the beef area, I'm gonna change my turn here because it's a bit awkward. The mixing station is down at the beef area. So it is a bit out of the way, um, especially since we don't have any beef cattle. However, I would like to get have a use for the straw and to use the mixing station itself. Uh, one thing I do think I'm going to get rid of is the forklift, the Clark forklift, um, just because I really have no need for it. I'm just going to let this empty out. There we go. 
uh, pipe. I've been playing some FS13 uh, off screen as well, and it, oh my god, the controls on Xbox are so different. Well, on Xbox and the Xbox controller. Um, if you remember when I started FS15, if you watched those videos, and I know a couple of people have, um, a few people have, um, I was really struggling with the controls because they were so different to what I was used to with 2013. And now the I have the opposite problem where the 2013 controls are so ridiculously difficult because I'm so used to the 2015 controls. Um, it's really bizarre. I'm just going to move my headphones back a bit. There we go. I won't hit half my microphone again. Um, I know in a couple of episodes of various series I've been a bit, uh, well, quite negative actually on various things that I've seen in the news. Uh, so I'm going to try and avoid talking about the news just because I, I end up having a rant and getting angry and saying things that I probably shouldn't say. Uh, so I'm just going to keep talking about the game and news about well, the game and gaming. Um, and on that note... <laughs> see, I managed to link this in quite nicely because I wanted to talk about this as well. Um, last night, uh, in a bit of a tired stupor, I rather I did something that I normally don't do, and I um, well, I did pre-order FS15, obviously. Um, but what well, what I did was a bit bizarre. I was on Steam looking through the top games and all that, just because I wanted to see if there were any new games coming out that I'd be interested in. And there was one that I knew I would be in. That's GTA 5. Now that's not out until. At present day, um, I've got a sneaking suspicion it's going to get delayed again. But I did so I did something way out of my own comfort zone, and I pre-ordered the game. <laughs> and that was a 60 euro pre-order for a digital d edition of the game. Um, that's you know talking about it the day after I've done it. Fully awake. That's stupid. Man. I mean, you're buying a digital edition, so why is it 60, 60 euros? Which is probably about sixty dollars, maybe even a bit more than sixty dollars. Um, you know, I don't mind paying full price if it's going to be a good game. Which I'm going to pay like, it damn well better be, or else I'll be very unimpressed at uh, making a video to that effect. Um, but from what I've seen from PS4. Xbox 360 and Xbox One footage uh, of the multiplayer. I haven't. I don't know the story of the game. Um, I know it's been out on Xbox 360 and PS3 for a couple of years now. I have intentionally kept myself away from the story of GTA 5. So uh, when it releases eventually, uh, I'll probably take a couple of weeks and uh, play through the story and finally find out what all the fuss is about. <laughs> It's not going to go on the channel, by the way. Um, my computer meets the recommended, uh, the recommended specs, just. So I won't have, probably won't have a great um, frame rate, and barely run at um, probably about 40 frames per second. I, would I hope it'll run more than 30 um, on my computer because I'm used to 60 FPS, or at least, you know, greater than 30. Um, I say that farms are trying about 25 FPS at the moment. Uh, in fact, uh, is it? FPS. It's running 30 FPS. And bonked off my microphone there, I apologize. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what I just brought up, that is the essentially the dev console for the game. Uh, you can enable that in the XML. I'm not going to show you how, because it can cause some issues if... Um, but you can, it's essentially the cheat mode of the game. I don't use it to cheat, but it's just something that I use to... Uh, 
to diagnose if there's an issue with something I'm buying. Uh, it saves me having to open and close the log the whole time. Uh, although it only shows the last few lines of the log, as you saw. Um, it's just that if I want to buy something in game, I want to check it out and see if there are any bugs or uh, any major issues. Um, I can just open up the uh, dev console and check out the log from there. I can also, as you saw, enable the FPS counter in the game. Um, I think I can enable flight, but I don't want to. There are a few genuine cheats in there, like just plain adding money. Um, not going to do that. Never going to use that. Unless I'm like, doing a mod with spotlight or something in the future, uh, which I can't see myself doing, um, then I will just throw money at myself. Um, yeah, testing maps, I will throw money at myself. Screwing around off screen maps, I will throw money at myself. Um, Aldridge and Bantacow, these two maps, all money I get in game has been made in game. Very soon, all of the um, seeds are going to be made in game as well, courtesy of uh, both the seed master here and the seed production facility I have in Bandicam. I can put it in here as well, just kind of like a place to put it in. Um, like a, in theory, I could edit the map and uh, make a place to put it, but I don't want to. So, that's kind of it for news and randy things. I'm going to talk about myself for a bit um, because things uh, have been going well for me actually. Uh, and, and just for my own entertainment, I'm going to run through what I normally do in the afternoon, morning, afternoon time when I get up. Um, I tend to sleep in quite a bit because I'm lazy. Um, but when I get up, I go downstairs. Um, and I make myself a cup of coffee and some description of noodles. I absolutely love making noodles for breakfast. Um, they're for you Americans, ramen. Um, I either get like really, 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 really cheap, the cheapest of the cheap ramen. Um, I'm talking like 20 cents per pack ramen. Uh, I've gone up in the world, I used to get 12 cents per pack ramen. So, uh, I am going up in the world in terms of my noodle consumption. <laughs> um, but I, I just love it. Um, I usually get a, a 12 cents ramen, just to kind of counteract the cheapness of that. Um, I normally have a cappuccino as well, um, but I keep forgetting to look for the the uh, so-called spare box of cappuccinos in the kitchen for the last couple of days uh, because we've run out and I've been just drinking uh, coffee quite strong coffee which is why uh, if you notice in some of my videos I can get quite hyper that's the coffee <laughs> um, I make sure that the first thing I do after breakfast and after all my downstairs stuff is done which is kind of cleaning out the fire getting the fire ready to light because we don't have um, heating in the house we have one heater at the moment um, I've been told that over the summer we are actually getting central heating into the house um, where I'm living at the moment, so that's good. Um, but we, we have a fire, an open fire, and I throw some wood at it and a couple of fire lighters and um, that's it ready to be lit later on in the day. I also do the washing up from um, everybody's breakfasts and whatever coffee and tea and other beverages have been uh, had the night before. And uh, seeing as today is Thursday, I'm recording this. Um, my own play from last night's dinner because I actually, on Wednesdays, because of the meeting for the, the game, uh, and I'm not afraid to say the meetings do usually happen on Wednesdays, that's probably going to change, so uh, my routine will have to change as, uh, to, to fit. But at present, on Thursdays, I uh, wash my own plate from last night, the night before, because I had my dinner. Um, usually during the meeting, so I can be in the middle of a meeting on Skype and suddenly just mute my mic um, as my parents walk in with a plate of food. Um, so that's always tasty. Uh, one other thing that I usually do but don't always do in the mornings, um, it really depends on 
happens and how this works out is um, I feed the cat. We have, a, we have a beautiful cat that he's not a house cat, he's actually kind of wild still. Um, but he's kind of he's too old to be tamed into a house cat. But, you know, we do leave him into the house from time to time and we treat him as our own. Uh, his name's Tiger and he's just this beautiful the name for the coloration. He looks just adorable. And from our reckoning, he's somewhere in the region of 14 to 17 years old, which does seem to be, which, as far as I know, and I don't know that about cats, as far as I know, that's really, really old for a cat. Um, like we've had him around our garden for the past 10 or so years, and he was beginning We've been feeding him, and he's kind of tamed himself, in a way, because he lets us pet him and scratch him under the ear and scratch him under the chin, and all that kind of stuff that cats have been done. Um, I know some cats don't like certain things, but he seems to be okay with um, what we do. And we don't hurt him either, so he's just kind of... He don't give a damn. If it's particularly cold, I'll bring him into the, the kitchen, you know, you know, get him in there, and he'll just sit on the floor. And Dude, are you getting me food anytime soon? Because, you know, I am hungry. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny little cat things. So, I am a cat person. Um, I'm also a dog person. I'm, I'm actually a both person, which is odd. Um, I know most people are either cat people or dog people. I love both equally. Um, I think cats are a lot easier to deal with because they tend not to jump on you as much. And they tend to not try and attack your face. Uh, unless you've done something particularly grievous to them. Um, but yeah, I kind of prefer cats um, over dogs. Both are awesome. All animals are awesome. <laughs> Cows. Cows just strike me sense I don't trust cows. Um, horses equally. But I think that's from a, a really bad experience I had as a young child where a horse tried to eat jump. Um, I live in a town, by the way. I actually genuinely live in a town and these things happen to me. Um, Last year I was walking to a job that I had and a field of cows just kind of started stalking me for no reason. Um, strange things happen in Ireland, okay? Just if if you live in York, you probably heard this week a whole bunch of roads were accidentally legalized because the law that banned them was unconstitutional here. So for 36 hours, um, crystal meth, ecstasy, a load of really, really bad drugs were accidentally legal uh, to possess, and to uh, so it was inexplicably still illegal, but they do. It's just like, what? How do you accidentally make a law that's not legal? But the, that problem's been fixed and as of. Uh, Midnight last night, or this morning, I suppose. Um, they have been re. <laughs> they've been made re illegal, I suppose. And uh, legalization is the term, um, because they made a law that was actually legally binding. <laughs> um, I said I wasn't going to talk about news, and then I started talking about news. Oh, I'm going to try and talk about positive or funny news. Just these guys are douchebags. Um, <laughs> we'll get the reference when we get one minute. Um, I know time's almost up, but I want to talk about one more thing. And um, by the time this video goes live, um, if you're a Formula One fan, you'll know the result of this. Um, but because I'm recording this on Thursday, first practice hasn't even happened. Um, the Formula 1 weekend hasn't started yet, officially. Um, first dr the driver's press conferences and stuff like that have happened, all the Thursday stuff has happened, um, but this is just kind of... Ew. 
OBS. Be okay. Um, you know, all the Thursday stuff from the Formula One weekends happen, so all the cars are there, all the drivers are there. Including a couple of them. Uh, but what's been going on is Guido van der Gaard, um, who was who last drove in Formula One in the 2013 season, so the year before last. Um, he has been suing the Sauber team because they had him as a test driver last year, so he was a driver for them, but he wasn't in any races. He's been suing them because apparently and this is all well it is based around. Apparently his contract for them said he had a race drive for 2015. So you think, okay, that's no issue, they'll just give him the race drive. Except last year and during the 2014 season, they signed on two drivers to race for them this year. So Guido van der Gaard kind of said, okay, well, I'm going to have to take some legal advice here. Uh, and a lot of what I'm saying is conjecture, uh, so I don't know how true it is, but I'm just kind of trying to explain the story to you um, in a way that makes sense. So Guido van der Gaard, I presume, took some sort of legal advice, and um, he was clearly advised by his lawyers and by other people that, okay, uh, the best thing to do is to go to court in Switzerland, where Sauber is based, and to um, sue Sauber because of breach of contract and try to get them to either pay up for, you know, potential loss of earnings, which is always really hard to, um, you know, to quantify, or, uh, or to give him his seat, which, by, according to his contract, he deserves. And Sauber said, neither is going to happen. Okay. Case closed, or so you'd think. Um, during the week, and actually this morning, uh, well, yesterday morning, uh, the court, a court case for the same reason took place in Australia. Um, this is during the Formula One weekend, um, essentially. And the judge said, basically, well, what happened in Switzerland is legally binding. Um, and what happens here is binding around the world. I can, you know, he's a judge. He can call contempt of court, which is what would hap will happen if Sauber don't come up to some mutual agreement with Guido van der um, If you don't let him race, and Sauber is saying, well, it's not safe to let him race. I mean, we've we've developed the car for our two other drivers, our two drivers that we signed last year. And Guido van der Gaard is saying, well, you signed me two years ago, promised me a drive for this year. So, just to cut it a bit short, because I know I'm running over time now. Um, the judge said, okay, well, here's the deal. You're going to let him race, uh, or else I'm going to hold you in contempt of court, and this is binding for the entire 2015 Formula 1 Championship. Um, so, we appealed that this morning, uh, Thursday morning, uh, Irish time. Uh, the judgment came in that the appeal had been refused and Sauber have to let Guido van der Gaard race. They've appealed that decision now. Um, I don't know how. And that's going to be heard a couple of hours before free practice one starts. But there's an extra spanner thrown in the parks because there is a chance that according to the FIA's rules, Guido van der Gaard did not drive. Um, Sauber are pulling what I would consider to be genius tactics here. Um, the two reasons uh, that I'm kind of... I'm going to be on the fence here. I kind of agree with Guido van der Gaard's position, where he was after the contract and it wasn't honoured. But I, 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 that's Sauber's fault, essentially. But, what Sauber are doing is genius tactics. They're trying to get um, the court case delayed so much that, well, number one, Guido van der Gaard doesn't currently have a uh, Formula 1 super license he needs to race. But number two, if the Formula 1 race weekend starts 
before a final judgment has been put down. Um, and Guido van der Gaard isn't registered as a race driver. They need a really good reason to put him as a race driver. Um, I'm presuming a judgment would be considered a really good reason, but yeah. the way I'm seeing it right now, Sauber are trying to delay this so much that the only choice they have is to not let Guido van der Gaard race because it's outside of the rules of Formula One. That's genius tactics. That's you know, um, it's a bit underhanded. It's a bit questionable. But really, if you look at it from a neutral point of view, where you're not taking the side of either side in this argument, and personally, I I take Guido van der Gaard's side. I'm looking at neutral neutral again. That's genius. You you know. Go to the judge on the Friday before free practice one starts, and you say, "Well, do we need an answer like now? We need, you know, <laughs> we need to uh, hold everything now because, well, we've kind of registered our two drivers to race, and the rules of the affiliates say we can't change that without, you know, one of our two race drivers." being Marcus Ericsson and Felipe Nasser being injured. And, well, neither of them are. More importantly, Guido van der Gaard doesn't have a super license. So he... I mean, Judge, would you let somebody without a license drive? That's genius. That is genuinely genius. I think I'm going to leave it here. Um... I'm going to record another episode after this once I've got this... Uh, actually, no, what I'm going to do that. I'm going to go get the... Uh, though I did cheat a bit, I will admit. I drove from field 11 straight into field A, hit the harvester, and um, off screen, because... the low boy is annoying. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave it here, because... Uh, over the time that I'd like to you know, say that I have to you know, do this for space or something like that, I just prefer to do the time and uh, this is almost half an hour. I'm going to leave it here, I'm going to grab the low boy from wherever it is and find it and find, um, grab it. Um, bring the harvester to field one, where we'll be harvesting canola, as you saw me putting up down there over there. Uh, that's my plan. So, I'll leave it by saying, I've been Rainbow Dave, you've been watching Farming Simulator 15 on Old Rich Farm. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe, and all that nonsense, because well, it helps the channel grow, and it makes me feel awesome. <laughs> makes me feel like I'm doing things right for once, uh, because I even feel like I'm not failing miserably at everything I try. Um, <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, where we'll be harvesting field one. I'll be doing that manually as well. Uh, I am trying to cut down my use of course, but I know I haven't been using it much in 2015, but I am trying to cut down it in general. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching once again. I'll see you next time, and until then, stay safe, and goodbye!